This is MuggleCast, your Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts podcast covering everything about J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 290. Micah, Eric, and I are all here this week as usual, and I am pleased to report that Gina's back this week. Hey, Gina. Hello again. I'm glad we didn't scare you away. Um, I'm glad I, I didn't screw up so bad that... No. <laughs> you're awesome and and we told micah that he has to be on this episode with you i was gonna say a fine replacement <laughs> oh. actually better than you micah to be honest so <laughs> you better watch yourself don't screw up you're out <laughs> i'm slowly moving my stuff into the mogul cast newsroom <laughs> <laughs> okay well enough banter about kicking mike out I'm, he probably believes it's true so um it's okay micah you can stay <laughs> uh big news already week. packing up <laughs> <laughs> i bet you're you're one of those guys that has like just a knapsack right like everything <laughs> <laughs> big news week uh the new fantastic beast trailer came out a couple of days ago and it is so good ah. so good and we're gonna break it down but first why don't we just start with some overall impressions of it because um i'll start off and just say that I didn't think there was much magic in the first trailer for Fantastic Beasts, and I didn't realize that until I watched this one, because <laughs> this one just has the spells, it's got the references to Harry Potter, which we will definitely be getting into, um, and I don't know, it just felt like a Harry Potter movie, and it got me so excited. Did you guys get the same feeling? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, I, I would agree with that 100% uh having more of the magic having it look like the magic in harry potter that was the big thing for me there's apparition uh is a big part or apparition whatever you would call it the art of apparating yeah even the it's wb logo apparated. logo apparates into this i was gonna say that i thought it was very interesting that it apparated onto mm. the screen that i think is gonna be probably the most prominent it is in the trailer anyway in terms of spells used and i wonder why that is but Ultimately, if you're adult and you can do it, why not do it? You know. Yeah, I, I would just say I thought that uh, Eddie Redmayne did a great job uh, introducing J.K. Rowling. <laughs> oh, I'm glad someone said that. Yeah, oh. yeah. So at the MTV Movie Awards, when where he announced where he played the trailer, as Micah said, he pronounced her name wrong, but. Um, I'm actually at CinemaCon this week. It's where all the movie studios are sharing their upcoming slates with movie exhibitors. And um, Eddie Redmayne was here yesterday, and he said J.K. Rowling's name correctly. So I think uh -huh. somebody pulled him aside after the MTV <laughs> Movie Awards and said, "Hey, you're you're going to be kicked out of this fandom really quick unless you straighten out how you pronounce Rowling." <laughs> so news, get it right. Yeah, news next Monday would have been Eddie Redmayne removed as, you know, lead actor. <laughs> Barred from the Harry Potter fandom. I would assume, though, that if if more people were watching the MTV Movie Awards, that they would have called it. I didn't actually see a huge response on social media. I was actually expecting mm -hmm. a lot more people to to call attention to that. But mm. I will say the, the entrance uh, was pretty cool that he made he came up through the suitcase and of course at the end of the trailer we see him going into the suitcase so mm. <laughs> yeah a little tip of a cap uh, there yeah so i guess why don't we just start out with the thing that i think most people found most intriguing about this fantastic beast trailer um the it niffler? was <laughs> the Niffler, yeah. The <laughs> Definitely the, the Niffler. <laughs> no, a couple of, I don't know, about 30 seconds into the trailer, we see who I think, we hear who I think is Graves, played by Con Farrell, say right. to Newt, there's much more to you than meets the eye. Than meets the eye. Kicked out of Hogwarts for endangering a human life with a beast, yet one of your teachers argued against your expulsion. I wonder, what makes Dumbledore so fond of you, Mr. Scamander? Albus Dumbledore. So what? So the the shocking thing here was that what, what shocked me at first was that we're already hearing references that we understand from the Harry Potter books, Dumbledore, uh, Hogwarts, and that Newt was kicked out of Hogwarts. And what's particularly interesting about this, and something I've been raising a fuss about, is that 
in the Fantastic Beasts book that J.K. Rowling published in 2001, in Newt's bio in the back, it said he graduated from Hogwarts. So what gives? Maybe he came back. <sighs> Don't give me that. Maybe this is his redemption story. I completely uh. agree with you. Uh, that that was that was my first thought is that this is his story all about how um his life got flipped turned upside down and he got kicked out of hogwarts but now he has to do all this stuff has to is a loose term and he gets reinstated and is allowed to finish his degree but he's also the reason that all the beasts get let loose in the first place so so I he don't kind of digs a deeper hole, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't like the idea that he's like incompetent or not able to be. I, I want him to be just like the the smartest, most competent Hufflepuff there is. Um, so I get I get a little worried that he got kicked out. But if it was for a, a beast, then you can assume that it was something that he either quickly got under control or you know re resolved, or that this is essentially as as Gina said, uh, you know, his sort of coming to peace with uh with himself this could be like a, a room for character growth in that front mm -hmm. could be i i just find it interesting that he has much of the same storyline as hagrid does and i know a number of listeners pointed this out at least from the relationship with dumbledore getting expelled having an affinity for creatures that That's are potentially dangerous uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, very similar to Hagrid's storyline. And so, come on, J.K. Rowling, come up with some new material. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, wow. We also know... I'm just kidding. We also know that Dumbledore has a great interest in Newt, as Graves says, and J.K. Rowling followed up on that on Twitter. Um, she wouldn't elaborate further, but I found that interesting as well, because Dumbledore is very interested in both Hagrid and Newt. This was no. this was definitely the most surprising bit was the name drop of Dumbledore and then J.K. Rowling on Twitter afterwards kind of going ways to explain it. Yeah. Um, that was just the sh they, like I was shocked. I was not expecting. And there were a lot of cool things in the trailer, but I wasn't expecting the Dumbledore name drop. Yeah, um, I would have expected like an offhand reference to Hogwarts like, oh, yeah, I went to Hogwarts back right. over in England. But I didn't expect it to potentially be a pivotal part of the story. Uh, enough to make it in the trailer too like kicked yeah. out of hogwarts well that could be just you know wb's way of showing that hog that they're in the same universe for this trailer but then you have the dumbledore reference too so it's like which one is excessive versus which one's actually a plot point like if newt having been kicked out of hogwarts is part of the greater story of the movie or not i think that's so i really hope it is because i think i hope this is a redemption story and that newt will be returning to hogwarts to complete his degree because i think that would be a great arc over three movies we've seen mm -hmm. over the past couple of years i'm, I'm thinking about uh when jk rowling tweeted uh you all went to hogwarts we, we were all there together people <laughs> are still deeply connected to hogwarts so if they could watch this arc in which newt feels so bad presumably about getting kicked out of hogwarts and he wants to go back so bad we could all relate to that. Well, do we see him in Hogwarts at, in this trailer when he's no. squeezing the, it looks like a giant raisin or something. Did you guys take that to be the greenhouse at, at Hogwarts? No. You know what scene I'm talking about? I, I, <laughs> oh, I, I totally thought that that was, cause it's like, and it happens when he's, they're still talking about Hogwarts. He's, um, Newt is looking up at the kind of, did say we the watch camera. the same trailer? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can give you a timestamp. <laughs> yeah, give me a timestamp on this. I'll give you a timestamp. I know it frame by frame. I you, really you thought this was... You raised a good point, though, Eric. You did. I, and I think going back to the earlier discussion about why Warner Brothers did this, I think it's just the ability to captivate the audience that may not be as close to the news about Fantastic Beasts, putting out Hogwarts, putting out Dumbledore, immediately you're back into that world and that's within the first few seconds of this trailer you know right? it's interesting and we talked about you know the them including the magical things the other thing was the plates obviously right the plates and or napkins flying across oh. is it jacob uh is the muggle yeah. um yeah and he was and into sort it of in awe oh yeah i'd be into it too um 
so that 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 struck me but it also could be it, it could be that this trailer is really meant to sell that they're the same universe almost on a like a a, a a deep level where they're showing this basically the same effects because like at between apparition and then what the napkins were doing like that's exactly that's straight out of deathly hallows mm-hmm. i think um and so with that and dumbledore and hogwarts being mentioned it's like really beating you over the head although this trailer feels completely fresh and i don't think any of it was like re reused or repurposed or like annoyingly overused but i i have to say like maybe that's sort of their the whole point to this is to showcase the magical aspects of the world that are the same from what we're used to and it, it gets casual fans interested as mm-hmm. i think you were alluding to like when i consider it yes. one thing of a casual harry potter th- fan i think of like my sister or my brother like if they hear hogwarts and dumbledore specifically or see newt's hufflepuff scarf which also, by the way, may be an indicator that Newt really wants to go back to Hogwarts because he brought it with him and he's like, oh, man, yeah. I miss my Hufflepuff days. I'm bringing my Hufflepuff pride with me to the U.S. I want to go back so bad. Oh, my God. I, I know we know this is sort of an issue for like uh, many reasons him being expelled like that would cause like a lot of weird plot issues. But I'm, how old do we think Newt is supposed to be? Um, Eddie Redmayne is... Uh, six years older than me he's like 33 so is he really can we really realistically expect that he's playing a 17 year old newt's commander an 18 year old newt's commander or somebody who's not too old to go back to hogwarts is there an age limit at hogwarts he looks like he's 12 well no, I, I would say so. he's he looks like he's fresh out of hogwarts age i would but say I yeah. freshly 20 21 by the way uh micah the scene which i thought was the greenhouse it's like 19 20 seconds in it turns out on the overhead shot jacob is sitting in a chair watching oh, him bad. through the yeah. thing so it's not which, Hogwarts greenhouses but i have i have a theory on where that is i think that's in his suitcase because oh. at the end of the trailer he ushers him down mm. come on yeah Good observation. This is so cool. <laughs> See, this is why you're replacing Micah. Micah would never come up with something like that. That's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my other thought about them name dropping Hogwarts so quickly in this trailer and, and our association with this film is we know we know Hogwarts. We know everyone, whether you're casual or not, knows Hogwarts. Are we... Is that because we're going to meet all the other schools as well, and he's going to get somewhat of an education from all those schools? That's interesting. Could he continue his education potentially somewhere else? And you know what, Andrew, I was reading a couple of your posts, and you did cite the um, the listener, uh, one of the users sent in the the quote from Fantastic Piece, the book, which said that yeah. he like basically graduated. Hogwarts then went to the ministry for two years, then worked in this department, then this department, then this department. And I was thinking like, sure, that could probably at this point, since it was written in 2001, it could probably be changed. It could probably be retconned or just ignored completely um, to my understanding. But then I also like the idea that he could continue his education somewhere else. Yeah, I hope he goes back to, well, I mean, it seems, I think it seems pretty certain that he'll go back to Hogwarts. But yeah, maybe along his way, he could be going to these other schools. I think one idea that we kicked around before is that in sequels to Fantastic Beasts, he will be going, it won't be set in the United States. It'll be set elsewhere, potentially where one of those other schools could be. Right. And maybe that's what I'm thinking. Maybe even if he pops in at Hogwarts for, you know, a couple minutes. Gosh, it'd be weird if they had to close the studio tour for a day or two because they had to use some of the sets again. <laughs> like, sorry, we're filming on these sets again. <laughs> yeah. Know? That'd Dudes be in Diagon crazy. Alley right now. Yeah. Um, but the, the age question is interesting. I think we're going to have to set aside the fact that Eddie Redmayne doesn't look like he should be going to Hogwarts right now. Because I, I, think, I, think, I think, Gina, you may have said it. He, at best, he looks like he's graduating He's in his graduation year. He definitely he's, looks young. Yeah, he's believable 17, 18, more 18. Yeah. But if, if they said 21, and if they said his actual age, which is 35, I, I'd go, 
anywhere in that range. <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking like Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry, comparing that to like third year Newt, I just could not see that at all. If if say this movie was set in Newt's third year at Hogwarts, mm-hmm. right? It just doesn't. Yeah, you don't know what year he was expelled. Right. Yet. Yeah. Yet. And but it's I, also I important to remember that Dumbledore was a teacher at Hogwarts during this time. Well, and that's the coolest thing is J.K. Rowling, like back in 1998, or it was very early on in the Harry Potter series, was asked, "How old is Dumbledore?" And she said, "150." So she's she. It's it's perfectly logical that she could wrap Dumbledore into this world. That said, how exciting is it that Albus Dumbledore is part of this film's world? Uh, like, even if it never amounts to anything more in this film than a name drop, I think it's pretty darn special to think that while uh, Newt and his friends are solving this problem somewhere in the world, uh, Albus Dumbledore is, like, off discovering the 12 uses of dragon's blood or something. Yeah. You, you know, like, it's it's a really cool idea that just, like, it makes me giddy for a whole different reason, like, on a whole different level. Now, you guys are convincing me that potentially he could be returning to Hogwarts. But alternate theory, and this is the one I I set out with initially, and I still stand by it. I (laughs) wouldn't be surprised if J.K. Rowling actually changes canon. Because like we referenced a couple minutes ago, in the Fantastic Beast book, at the very back, there's a bio for Newt, and it says, upon graduation from Hogwarts. What if he doesn't return to Hogwarts or... um, I don't know, maybe he returns in some capacity and doesn't graduate. I think that, see, there's there's a little, there's some interesting evidence to support this theory. Um, a new Hogwarts Classics box set is coming out this June, and it only has Beetle the Bard and Quidditch Through the Ages. It doesn't include Fantastic Beasts, whereas this box set used to, which is really strange. Um, and we also know, and we talked about this on the last episode, Um, that they are republishing Fantastic Beasts next year, I think in like February or March. So if they're revising Fantastic Beasts, I think that's going to be a chance for them, assuming it's going to be the same book, but expanded, I think this bio is going to go deeper um, and either explain further that, you know, how he left Hogwarts and then eventually came back, or... They're just going to take out upon graduation from Hogwarts, yeah. Be- because it just it 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 seems strange. Like I have to think J.K. Rowling came up with this expulsion thing more recently than when she wrote this book in two thousand one. Because yeah, isn't that something important you would include in the bio? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I I don't think there's a question about that. And I agree with you. Like all of your sleuthing has turned up some really compelling ideas. Um, but like. My question then is, why is he an expelled student? Why is that relevant to the story uh, of this? Why is it, you know, such a plot point? You know, what does that mean for Newt if he has been expelled? Is that just uh, one reason for uh, Colin Farrell's character to try and discredit him? You know, what what exactly, what what gives that he's Mm -hmm. expelled? Does it make him more of a bad boy Um, that audiences, is he more endearing to audiences because he was expelled? You know, a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet yeah I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think they're really going for the bad boy. With him. I think it's more the bumbling, oops, this happened type character. But I, I'm i wondering, Andrew. Sounds like if, Hagrid. I know, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Newt I'm, is Hagrid's great, great grandfather. <laughs> that That would be interesting. I'm wondering if it's a culmination of our theories, Andrew, where they change it from uh, he graduated to he has an honorary degree because he went to all the different schools and he learned and all that from all of them. And he had to degree. I like that. Well, it seems now it seems far fetched that he wouldn't have graduated from Hogwarts, but yet he's Order of Merlin. Uh, I don't oh. know what class, but he has all these other accolades, but yet yeah. was kicked out of Hogwarts. Yeah. I, because, that doesn't add up. Right. Especially because like you just look at this bio and he had a busy career after Hogwarts. So it's like, 
I get, I get, is there going to be like a three year period if there's three movies where he was out of Hogwarts or longer and then he started this whole career? I, I and, and by the way, I just w- want to say that I think it's fine that she's changing this canon because she wrote this back in 2001. It does not relate to the Harry Potter books at all. It it plays virtually no role. So it's okay for her to adjust this in order to make a better story. Um, and yet the more I think about this redemption thing that he will be going to Hogwarts. So that's how JK Rowling can explain this bio. He will be going back to Hogwarts. I just love that idea so much. And I really hope it's true. That'd be cool. You're, you're assuming that she's not going to find a way to just weave this all together. That well, the redemption it's... would weave it together. Yeah, well, it just the fact that you mentioned before that you're okay with the fact that she is changing the canon, but there's nothing to state that she will do that. I mean, it, there's there's the very good chance, given how good she is at telling a story, that mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with what she wrote back in 2001, and she just will be going back very craftily is able to figure this out i mean, I, I, I don't know like i think it, i think we could it's safe to assume i think that when she wrote this back in 2000 or 2001 she was not thinking that there would be a film trilogy 15 years down the road right in 2001 there was barely a, a film right of harry potter at all exactly so and that's why i think it's okay to change this yeah i don't know anyway how about another question? This has been bugging fans a lot. Why wasn't his wand snapped? I was thinking about this a lot because uh, obviously it was in the dock for a couple days now, and I think I have an answer. So we know that Hagrid, when he got expelled, his wand was snapped. But my theory is uh, Hagrid was underage. We know he was in his, uh, was it his third year or fifth year when that happened? Um, I'm forgetting. Uh, but he was underage at the time. My theory is Newt is of age. If he was expelled from Hogwarts when he was 17, like one of the reasons of them snapping your mm-hmm. wand is so, because you're an untrained wizard and you can't possibly be trusted out in the outer world. But if he's of age, then he's an adult wizard and should be afforded all the rights of being an adult wizard, including the right to carry a wand. But he won't have graduated from Hogwarts because Hogwarts can't have him there. Okay, that's 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 the only good theory I've ever heard, (laughs) because I've I sat here and got angry at the fact that Hagrid had his wand broken and this guy gets to run around with his wand. Well, with Hagrid, I think, too, with with the whole Hagrid thing is it happens in Chamber of Secrets. Harry's 12 and you have to for dramatic weight. You know, JKR has something in there about his wand getting snapped. You know, it's like, oh, they snapped my wand, Harry. And Harry fears and has nightmares about his own wand being reduced to shreds. You know, you're just like, oh, this is clearly like a child's nightmare. Like, sure, they snap your wand, but I'm saying more more along. It's, you know, I think I can see that being like retconned. Like, maybe that never happens. Hagrid, we know, keeps his wand anyway, or, you know, in some form has it in, in in the way of the umbrella. But um that that's something in, that's interesting to me like the whole snapping of the wands it's also possible that his wand was snapped and and the thing is that the the wand that we've seen him have in in um promos and in the movie could be a, another wand like either one that he um got from somewhere else where they they didn't have to check to see if he was allowed to carry one yeah or one from you know maybe the Maybe the the woods. I'm trying to think. Isn't there? There was something about his wand being all natural. Did you guys remember this, or am I making this up? Because it could be that I'm making this up. There's Newt something wand? about. Yeah, his he's somebody called it a vegan wand. Where <laughs> it, it, I believe this. Yeah, this this might just this be this in the trailer. Also, this might be the other. <laughs> this might be the other podcast I do a little more a uh, fan theory, but I don't think it is. But. Uh, the idea was that he had a vegan wand, meaning that it doesn't contain animal parts uh, to symbolize essentially wow. his connection with the magical world. I kind of like that idea, but it has no place in this discussion because you know what? I think it probably was a fan theory. Well, it's, the also, other... it's also possible, though, and I don't know, Andrew, if this is where you were going, but 
maybe the law rule wasn't in place at the time that your wand got snapped if you were expelled. Maybe. I was looking it up a little bit, and I didn't see, like, a starting point. But, yeah, that 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 could be possible. I mean, it could have been a Dumbledore era thing or something like that. Um, but I was going to say, you know, he could have just stolen the wand. <laughs> but then there's the question of how, how well would it work. Right. Um, but, and yeah. we don't know what he got expelled for either. I mean, the what Hagrid got expelled for ultimately resulted in somebody's death we don't well, know it's if, essentially if the it's same equivalent. oh yeah it might not be the same thing i was going to say it's similar though it's very similar because um of the large beast right didn't wasn't aragog is sent like rumored to be like tom riddle made it out to be that aragog was the slytherin's monster um, yeah see but to be expelled from hogwarts you have to have done something pretty bad because there's other punishment at hogwarts like a suspension or... or you supposedly have to do something really bad again comparing it to Hagrid's situation he didn't do anything yet he was expelled could mm. this be another one of those situations where newt got set up yeah you know the other thing is i i mean i believe i believe uh, newt is totally guilty of whatever they say he did uh, but the beast just knowing that he uh ignores or or sort of is ignorant of the repercussions of his suitcase again going back to this trailer which we haven't really talked a whole lot about um the the clasp it like pops open automatically on its own um or the niffler uh somehow causes it to pop open but he's consciously aware of this when he's going through customs in the trailer and is like oh got to get that fixed but he doesn't seem to take a whole lot of stock in like the dangers of having that having a flawed briefcase essentially like th- a more careful person would get that fixed the next minute you mm-hmm. know um, so wh- one other thing getting back to this this Dumbledore line in the trailer to me i think this confirms that Dumbledore will be making an appearance at some point because JK Rowling saying that Dumbledore was very fond excuse me, fond of Newt, uh, with the fact that, you know, thankfully, thank the Lord, Michael Gambon is still alive and well. Um, We know Dumbledore is a very old character. He's a beloved character. He's J.K. Rowling's favorite character, um, or top two. I think that there's a lot of evidence here suggesting that we will see Dumbledore either, you know, uh, perhaps like, Newt will save the day at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie. And maybe not in this movie, but be- maybe by the next movie or the third movie, Dumbledore's going to want to say something to him. Hey, Newt, thanks for saving the day over there in the U.S. Why don't you come back to Hogwarts? <laughs> I'm the headmaster now. I can do that. I can let you back in. Right, do you guys think we're going to be seeing him at some point? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I would so love excited. that to be a Well, I mentioned think- the name otherwise. I mean, other than to draw in the fans but right i think we haven't gotten a full casting list for this movie yet right so there's a chance i think they would make it a surprise i don't think they would want anyone to know until you saw it yeah i i I think there's a good chance i i really really do and i think that uh it kind of plays into the next question that you ask about him being expelled being the catalyst for him going overseas and then what you just mentioned if he's able to save the day you know or does he talk with Dumbledore does he look to him for advice knowing that uh he's clearly fond of 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 young Newt so who knows I mean there's there's a ton of possibilities perhaps Dumbledore sent him uh was the one who sent him to America Mm. Mm. like to do what I'd study the beasts. Study the beast. Study the small uprising that's happening. Mm. I guess it is a way of pursuing his interests without the um, what's the word stigma of having been an expelled uh, student. Um, and I I looked it up, and I don't know if we know when in time the next movies are starting, but Dumbledore becomes headmaster in 1955. Mm. Yeah, you know what's interesting is, um, and based on what J.K. Rowling said on Twitter about Dumbledore just being a young teacher at the time and not having as much sway as he obviously does when he's 
a headmaster, certain mathematics suggests that Dumbledore would be about 40 in the 20s. Um, what I would love, and this is sort of my my fan wish and hope and dream, is that if there is a younger Dumbledore in the Fantastic Beasts trilogy, that he's played by Jared Harris, the son of Richard oh, Harris. Oh, I would love that. That's cool. That, would he be, that would be Is he an actor? Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. He always he plays did. a bad guy. <laughs> He, he was really a, he does. Was, he was uh, was he Moriarty in uh, in the new Sherlock with uh, the second Sherlock Holmes with uh, Robert Downey Jr. I think I he think was. So yes, um, he is in it. I can't remember if he's Moriarty or not, but he, he is in he, it. He's the bad guy. But yeah, what's his um, first name again? I want to look at a picture of him. Jared Harris. He actually. So many people say he looks just like Richard Harris oh. did. He looks like Richard young Richard Harris. Harris, and if you close your eyes and listen to him, he has the same cadence as richard mm. it's bizarre so like i don't want to say oh michael gambon shouldn't dumbledore but like if you're looking for like a 40s or 50 year old dumbledore like a, a much younger you know i don't know i'd st- i would like to get to be able to see like a more early era richard a younger Harris. yeah yeah i, I would like, like a younger i see that point but honestly i think um they would ask michael gambon first I think that I, me personally, what I prefer to see Michael Gambit, and they could put the right amount of makeup on him and do some CGI well, to make him I look mean, younger. Look at the Tom Riddle orphanage scenes in was it Half Blood? Uh, you know, do you feel that he oh, looks right. young there? Yeah. But that's still like the shorter um, hair. Well, that's the 1930s, isn't it? It's supposed to be. Hmm. Uh, or, well, early I didn't 40s. think he looked young enough there, but. Yeah, no, I didn't think now, he looked, I now you're that saying that's was... only twenty uh, ten years difference. Yeah, that they that, might use him. I didn't think that makeup was very good, but um, but yeah, it was late thirties, right? Because at forty two, that was the Chamber of Secrets, and Riddle was fifth or sixth year. Um, you know, then it was like nineteen thirty eight or thirty seven when Dumbledore came calling. So that was their version of nineteen thirty seven Dumbledore. Not to get too hung up on one point, but. I still, I, I'm just going forward with my fan wish. I would love it to be Jared Harris, who is currently 55. Oh, Gina, we'll short, the short answer to the question is yes. We all anticipate that he'll show up at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. Gina also mentioned um, that it was in the 1950s that he was promoted to headmaster. So maybe Dumbledore could help. I, I'm sure Dumbledore will help him get back into Hogwarts in some way. Maybe there will be a shift in power at Hogwarts during the years that Newt is, you know, trying to redeem himself. And then by the end of it, Dumbledore's like, oh, you know, I've got the hookups with so-and-so. And <laughs> he or she said they can get you back. So you're good. There's one thing about this trailer is even if Dumbledore isn't a headmaster, his name has some gravitas to whoever's speaking. You know, yeah. whoever is whoever is speaking is interested in why Albus Dumbledore likes Newt. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, why would Graves and Orr know of Dumbledore, a teacher at a Hogwarts over at Hogwarts overseas, and care what he thinks? I mean, even yeah. in even in Deathly Hallows, it is stated that Dumbledore was making worldly connections when he was very young, still at school, actually, still in Hogwarts. So. You know, he mm. Dumbledore would, could have been 15 and 16 and be writing um, state senators or the equivalent, you know, like uh, just about magical things. But like that's the cool thing about Dumbledore is he's such a worldwide persona at an early age back then that you can use him in this way. Like it's really brilliant of Joe to have to have done this. Yeah, um, that's what makes me think that Newt's mission is not all entirely related to these fantastic beasts. You know, there's potential for some sort of political motivation maybe a little bit of spying on the part of newt maybe it's pushing it a little bit too far but i feel like you know clearly he's going to be involved with the the government uh here in new york and there's more to it than just these beasts oh yeah yeah i think i until until this trailer i thought the biggest aspect was actually going to be uh equality for wizards and witches and that still seems like it's going to be a big part of fantastic beasts um because because when these beasts get out of newt's suitcase they're going to be the muggles are going to be noticing and uh it looks like and actually getting back to the trailer there's a shot of somebody named shaw 
mm. at what looks like some sort of political fundraiser potentially. And America's flat American flags are in the background, and there's a big sign of Shaw, and it says Shaw, America's future, <laughs> suggesting he's running for elected office. My guess is he's he's a muggle, and he probably does not like that the beasts have escaped and that, you know, he now knows that wizards and witches are amongst them. So, so yeah, I think that's good. If you look really closely at the bottom, it says make America great again. (laughs) Make America wizard free again. So here's, here's an idea. I I just love the idea that the beasts won't be, no, actually I don't like the idea, but I like the, the possibility that there could be like a lot of, uh government motivations like behind the plot of this film like because we know he interacts with these high ranking officials and we know that there are these political activists right that we've seen in other trailers it's just it's never been stated overtly that there's something to do with the government but like what if like what you're saying Micah like what if it is like what if the beasts aren't the biggest part of this film what if he sort of just the beasts happen but it's really about something else. The, the or the beasts are sort of a means to an end. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. That they're the means to the end. There is a shot of a newspaper being read, yes. and there was an interesting little headline. The big headline on the front page was Mag- Magical Disturbances, Something Risk Wizarding Exposure. And then What's the, the name of the paper? Can you see that? You know what? I tried to make it out, but... It's like the New York something with a G. I think it's I, New York Gazette. Oh, uh, I thought it was something weird, like, like you, Gilly or a, something. Do you have I a timestamp of when that is? I don't ghost. have the trailer open. I'm just looking at the You know, like the New York Post, New York Ghost? Oh. <laughs> because no, if, you look, if you look above where it says International Wizard Hunt Intensifies, I think the name of the paper is up there, too. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. It, it, looks like it's a really short word yeah G- galene oh Galeen you're right quest something okay uh, we gotta figure that out that's gonna bug me <laughs> who is alberto macellarus yeah i don't a, know but i'm i'm man. wondering if he'll be if he'll come into play maybe in the sequel but anyway there's a the, there's a sub headline that says president serafina picuri to address fearful american wizarding community And that, to me, suggests that the entire wizarding body across the United States is deeply concerned about what's going on in New York. So there's deep ramifications um, for Newt and his mistake. So if he is trying to get back to Hogwarts as well, he's definitely seriously endangered his chances. (laughs) How about um, how about that suitcase? So uh, how about that suitcase? Towards the beginning of the trailer, we get a we get a little glimpse of some clever magic. I assume this was a J.K. Rowling idea. So, you know, we've spoken a lot about the suitcase and all of his beasts are hiding in there. And in the trailer at the beginning, one is trying to kind of get out. And when he puts the suitcase in front of U.S. Customs, because he just took a ship over from England, um, he s- kind of secretly flips a little switch where the keyhole is and when he flips it a little tab pops up that says muggle worthy in other words the suitcase can now be seen yeah muggles can see the inside of the suitcase and it'll be there won't be a world of on the up and up yeah (laughs) and then of course his hufflepuff scarf was in there his new york city map was in there clock binoculars some other clothes so So were they really in there or is that just what he wants customs to see? I think he... they're what, what's really in there because of the Hufflepuff scarf, right? Right. He left his Hufflepuff Ooh. scarf at home. <laughs> it's just an illusion. Isn't there a promotional image of him wearing that scarf? I think there is. Um, there might yeah, be. Yeah, we've definitely discussed that scarf before. But yeah. going oh. back to Gina's point from earlier in the episode, though, I mean, this is very reminiscent of the fact that you know, we've seen this type of magic before, you know, if in fact that one scene that we talked about is from them being in the trunk, it reminded me of, you know, Mad-Eye Moody. It reminded me of the camp tent from the Quidditch World Cup, how you just kind of go inside. And of course, the tent that's used throughout Deathly Hallows, that these small confined spaces can actually be used for any number of purposes. And 
you know, it would make sense that you can disguise to muggles the fact that there's more than meets the eye. And, you know, just like the room of requirement can be any room you need it to be. The suitcase has any number of settings where it is something different. You know, you flip a switch, it's muggle friendly. Oh, it is just a regular looking briefcase with regular stuff in it. Like, I feel like it's both. Like, I feel like those things in it are real. Oh, yeah, I agree. So one more thing to talk about here. We also got some listener feedback is Hedwig's theme. It's back again. We saw it in the teaser trailer. We discussed it. Um, it appeared again in the second trailer, a, a different version of it. I guess similar to the teaser trailer one, but also a little newer. A, a lot of people have been asking me what I thought. I, I like it. I, at this point, I'm just kind of like, okay, cool. Like, I don't know if it gets me excited because I prefer the original version. I don't necessarily love this regenerated version of Hedwig's theme. I had a very adverse reaction when it was used in the first trailer. So oh, yeah. So you, yeah. you still don't like it. <laughs> no, you had that reaction. Oh. I, I remember you did not care for it, but I am so excited whenever it's used. And like that, that theme really gets me pulled back in like i know the use of dumbledore and hogwarts and and the magic flying around that helps but especially that theme really pulls me in and i think this is a very big indicator that they will continue with that theme throughout this series they'll just stop calling it hedwig's theme it'll become newt's uh niffler's theme uh, maybe they the, better not. <laughs> maybe <laughs> they'll just theme. call it like the Fantastic magic theme overture. or something. Yeah, like, magic overture. I love mm. magic. Or... You know, well, like, and I, I didn't like it at all. I didn't think it had a place in. I mean, I love it, but I don't. I didn't like it in this movie associated with this trilogy. I was like, can't they get something new? But ultimately, like, something a they, a that something new. <laughs> a, a they probably won't. And B, actually, this trailer, the use of it in this trailer finally turned my mind around. I, I love it in this trailer. I, I think it is exciting. It's obviously, like, um, in a in a different key and, like, with more, I don't know, mechanical sounds to it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever they did to it where it's different, I think it perfectly accentuates this trailer. The fact that it's familiar is probably just another one of the selling points. Of course. Um, you know, but like I think you, you, you it would be a miss on the port of Warner Brothers to not use it. Yeah, because it pulls you in similar to, as Gina mentioned, Hogwarts and Dumbledore. Right. When you hear that music for most people, whether you're the casual fan or you're the avid fan, you know what you're about to see or you, you know, know the world that you're about to be immersed in. What else just got me crazy is I was reviewing it just now, and at 108, there's a brick wall that turns into yeah. something else. It's like a speakeasy or something, like an old speak, but it reminds me of uh, getting into Diagon Alley. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I liked wall. that too. Yeah. Come that was another on. moment where I was like, the magic, it's back. Yeah, the magic is back. Like, that is just the coolest. But, but on the point of iconic themes, I would like to hope, and we learned this the other day, James Newton Howard will be scoring the first Fantastic Beast movie. What has he done? He did only the entire Hunger Games series. Oh, Which man. I don't remember any of the music from. I know, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why when people said that, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Good, good, um, I think. Yeah. What I'm wondering is... That's what I remember um, from the Hunger Games soundtrack. I was going to ask, did he compose this trailer? I don't know. Because the music in this trailer did get me excited, and <laughs> his name just thrown out there didn't really excite me. Yeah, but I I think we learned who I think we learned he was composing one day, and then the next day the trailer came out, and I thought, oh, all right, I'll go with this. Mm. Usually trailers have their own music. There's there's yeah. some of what you'll see in the movie, but not. But it'll sometimes be generic trailer music. Like it's... yeah, it can be music mm -hmm. from other things. Yeah, like you could you could see a new action movie with Pirates of the Caribbean riffs in it. 
dun, in dun, the trailer. Dun, dun. Um, James Newton Howard has also scored The Bourne Legacy, Snow White oh. and the Huntsman, The Huntsman Winter's War, which comes out in a couple of weeks, Maleficent, The Very Bad, The Last Airbender, and 2003's Peter Pan. So... So he's got a good track record. It'll be interesting to see if he sticks around for all of them. Or was anybody, I was feeling a little disappointed. I was kind of holding out for John Williams to come back since, you know, he came uh, back for Star Wars. He's too Force busy Awakens. making the Star Wars money, man. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. If they had gone to Chris Columbus, then yes, John Williams would have come back. Well, but since yeah, it's David Chris Yates. has some sway. Yeah. Well, George Lucas didn't come back to Star Wars and John Williams still did. Yeah, George Lucas is... He's Nobody wanted John. George Lucas to come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Williams is still immersed in Harry Potter, though. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You know what? I want to see Chris Columbus direct one of these movies. Because he always said, like, oh, man, what if I had, uh, you know, done one more? What, yeah. what would that have been like? Like, yeah. it's like, I have to support my decision to go and be with my family, but darn, what would have happened? How Actually, would it have been different? That would be kind of cool for one Harry Potter director to direct each of the Fantastic Beasts movie. So you Aww. got David Yates for this one. You yeah. Get Chris Columbus for another. And uh, not Mike Noel. Let's get uh, Alfonso Cuaron back for the finale. Fantastic Beasts 3. Set in Australia. Let's not do that. <laughs> I, I'm ambivalent. It, it could you go right. You don't, want, you don't want to see Newt go back to Hogwarts and not wear his cloak? Uh, yeah exactly I'm just, I feel none the of the kids are in Alfon- uniform we need a Guillermo del Toro Fantastic Beasts okay that's what uh, we need all the Fantastic Beasts have like 18 eyes and sharper <laughs> claws so in bonus MuggleCast today on Patreon we'll be talking about the beasts in the trailer um, because we haven't even talked about those guys yet uh, why Hogwarts snaps the wands of the students. We'll be talking about that a little bit more and what kinds of things the Wizarding World Parks could do to celebrate the Cursed Child and Fantastic Beasts. Somebody asked us this question and I've been thinking about it. I think there's a lot of potential there. Huh. And you know what else I was thinking about while we were just discussing this? Um, if Fantastic Beasts does have a Hogwarts presence, so to speak, Universal will be so happy <laughs> that that the Hogwarts castles that they've built around the world are now relevant again in a new film series. I think <laughs> that would just excite them to no end. <laughs> also, doesn't Universal Studios Florida also have a New York section no. like built in already? Oh, oh, the outside. Wait, the outs. What are you talking they have, about? They have. Yes. A, it's a small corner. I think it's where Terminator it's- Ride is. It's part. Uh, it's kind of um. Oh, it is where Terminator. No, is. isn't that the? They Lunder also have the Marvel front? section, but they well, have, they have like a. Oh, you're a, saying New York and other areas of the park? Yeah, yeah, you know how there's London in in Florida. There's the London section. It's I guess like that was across the way from there. I was. I was. Yeah, just it's there New York. They they have little. It's it's just a few. It's it's just some scaffolding, like. But the buildings are meant to look like New York City. It's oh, like the I Daily see. Bugle, but mm. it's like, it's just a. I think we're thinking of two different areas. Regardless, no. it's it's no, just no, 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 there. No. There's a New York. It's like a corner of the park, uh, and it's just a couple of sets that make that are supposed to look like New York City. And it's from way back when New York City was more prominent in movies. It's but, like where Jaws used to be. Yeah, it would be really fun uh, for them to utilize that section as a Fantastic Beasts. Uh, maybe just to have like a merch store or something in Universal because it's built in. It's like it's already there. Why not? Well, I remember when they announced Diagon Alley that there was also a report that they had plans to do something for Fantastic Beasts. Or no, when they announced Fantastic Beasts, they announced that some elements of Fantastic Beasts would be coming to the theme park, Interesting, interesting. So yeah. I guess we'll see what's going to happen. I don't think anything's going to happen soon, but maybe maybe they'll add a little daytime show like the ones that they already have. That'd be cool. It's More on that. Us. I'm on assuming Patreon. Universal put in its contract somehow that any offshoots and new movies will be able to be incorporated into their parks <laughs> you must include hogwarts or diagon alley in every <laughs> single wizarding world movie to come <laughs> but they could also do expansions definitely in orlando they got the room yeah. for that yeah so let's move on to some listener feedback micah do you want to read a couple of these yeah sure so we put out the question on twitter about what excited people the most about the new trailer and uh, we got some good responses. The first from Queen Amy Dalla. 
who says, uh, Newt reminds me of Hagrid expelled Dumbledore's friendship, love of beasts. So <laughs> yeah, we, we got that response, uh, quite a bit. So, uh, a lot of people drawing that comparison, uh, Jemima Skelly said, seeing a Niffler. Oh, um, and, uh, Kieran agreed everything, but specifically the adorable Niffler and the music. I had goosebumps while watching it. You'll see those on shelves in, uh, the Wizarding World theme park. What, goosebumps? No. Nifflers. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the pygmy puffs. Yeah, they're going to be like stuffed Nifflers that so you can take them home and... I didn't think they were that cute. <laughs> they weren't what I expected. Doesn't it look like a platypus to anybody else? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm waiting for a disgustingly cute beast. I thought maybe movie. it was a badger at first because he's a Hufflepuff. The series, the, the let's be honest, guys, the Fantastic Beast series really needs like a BB-8 equivalent to exactly. compete with Star Wars. <laughs> or like, it's going to be the Niffler. I'm predicting it right now. That Niffler will start beep boop beeping, and all of a sudden, it better survive all three films. Too. <laughs> oh yeah, Newt, Newt should totally have a Beast sidekick. I'm sorry. I think it is the Niffler. I think the come, Niffler is his kind of pet. Come mm. Fantastic Beast three, the final battle, we're not gonna. The Niffler is gonna get it. The Niffler's gonna snuff it. <laughs> just like Al Hedwig died. And like act one, it's just it's Niffler. <laughs> well, as you can see, it was clearly yeah. stealing somebody's uh, wallet there. Yeah. So, huh. He's a mischievous little Street fella. Street rat. Steal at your own risk. Um, at Anna Banana 1309 said Albus <laughs> Dumbledore. That's me. Magical, I'm Anna Banana. Epic music. <laughs> and the way it just feels like the Wizarding World. Agreed. At Bisexual Ginny says the set and costume design with Harry Potter, we never got to see the fashion decor of the era it was set in, meaning the 90s. And not much to see there. Justin um, Victoria, the ethereal Harry Potter charm is back. Grandiose cinematography, beautiful costume design, fedora wearing auras, <laughs> and badass feral. American feral. Which I think mm, is interesting. Yeah, I'm glad for that. Chris he played Davis. an American in he played an American in phone booth, but nobody saw that movie. <laughs> so. and this now is his chance. Uh, Chris Davis said the apparition effects it looks just as cool as it did in Deathly Hallows Part One. Agreed. I can't tell if that's sarcasm or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think for they me, looked fine in Part One. The apparition effect perfectly encapsulates what the books say apparition is like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Erica says, when Newt flipped the switch to Muggle Worthy in the trailer, honestly, my favorite part. That was cute. I wonder if they could somehow make like a, a toy version of that, but not <laughs> toy, like life size. I want it for reasons. You should yeah. sell Newt's briefcase. The box set of the DVD Blu-ray combo should oh, come totally. in, a Newt, in a Newt case. Totally. You know they're already thinking that. A Newt case? That's what, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what we called it on a former episode. Yeah, of I think that was an episode title once. So, yeah. You should uh, do marketing for them. But yeah, I think. There you go. The Wizarding World is going to start selling those uh, Newt cases. Newt cases. Get your Newt cases. Well, and the, the suitcase is going to be its own character, much like Hogwarts is its own character. You know, that this suitcase is going to maybe, I don't know. The traveling Hogwarts. Refuse to open or something like that. Yeah, you never know. And a lot of potential there. Navia makes an interesting point uh, saying security check when he apparently arrives from a ship. It's interesting he doesn't seem to arrive via magical means. You know, I'm wondering hmm. if that wasn't hmm. already addressed by Joe on Pottermore very recently or just in general for longer travel isn't it harder to use like a broomstick i runs i don't want to say it runs out because it doesn't run on anything but like you wouldn't take a broomstick over an ocean because it's cold right like i wonder if he just had to because of the distance is all I'm harry thinking. took well, it harry hmm. took it over that body of water in movie five mm. oh, well, that was a movie but, uh, so well, this. This is <laughs> and also a river. Um, well, that was a not the Atlantic Ocean. Nothing, nothing. Harry traveled was the length of the Atlantic, or they got a dragon to go over the body of water in uh, Book Seven. So. I I can't see. 
the movie diving into the details like this, but maybe one reason could be paperwork wise. Like if he was going through customs and whatnot, and he's going to be visiting the United States, he needs to have all that paperwork in order. And part of that would require having a story of how you got over here. Yeah, I came off the boat that was right there. I'm not a wizard. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point, especially given all of the uh, issues that seem to be taking place. Right, they have to be like super cautious to not. And, maybe, right and maybe their other channels were cut off because of this. Oh, yeah. The, that's the good things point. that are happening. Mm. All right, uh, two more tweets here. One from T-Zach, who says, The familiar name drops, the theme, the characters, the magical Congress, the newspaper, the beasts, everything. <laughs> Actually, I just had another thought. Maybe it's against the law to operate across borders. Hmm. I, I, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I just imagine the the adverse effects of transporting yourself across the globe could be disastrous. Um, it must be safer. Must be safer. And he also got expelled. Let's not forget that. So he may not yeah. be wanting to use magic right away. All right, because they can track it. And uh, Matty J, the trailer music with Colin's voice overdub gave me chills. Also, they made Jacob seem good and Colin bad in a way. Do you guys agree with that? That's an interesting point. Yeah, Jacob seems like not annoying comic relief, but like just kind of the everyman. He see, it seems like he's our catalyst. Like he's our end to the magical world is the smuggle and not new. He's he, he's kind of us. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm not totally sure yet of what why like what purpose he serves in the movie. So hopefully right, it'll be seems something to be good. An observer, yeah. yeah. Like if but Newt's I, gonna have a sidekick, I want it to be like a pygmy puff or a cute little sea otter. <laughs> no, Jacob is cute. <laughs> Jacob is cute. I I did make this note. Why like as I was watching the trailer, one of my notes was. Why is Jacob allowed to see all this if he's a nomad? Like, what? What? Yeah, what makes Newt want to crawl into his suitcase in front of him and go, here, come on, you know, what makes him so special that he gets to go to these underground wizard speakeasies and live with Newt and go into his suitcase with him? Maybe they're in love. They're friends from the first day on the boat to New York. (laughs) Maybe. I I think Jacob's American. I think he is too. I think he's he knows um the girls. Maybe hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, if 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 that's the case then this cancels out my idea. Um maybe he sees one of Newt's beasts poke its head out or escape and Dan or not Dan Fogler. Uh Jake Jacob is the only one who saw it. So Newt's like, "Oh, oh crap." Here, yeah. come with me. I got to tell you about something. We'll wipe your memory later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you all about Obliviate. But um, we do know he has a big role in the movie. He's one of the four leads, so. Wasn't he announced to be a baker in Entertainment Weekly's yes. thing? Yeah, he's the PETA. Something <laughs> <laughs> Something about his shop. I wonder if there would be a love triangle between Newt, Pontina, and Jacob. Oh, wow. My heart couldn't take that. <laughs> <laughs> So that's all we have for right now about the Fantastic Beast trailer. One hour later, um, <laughs> we're going to discuss it more in Bonus MuggleCast on Patreon, and I'm sure we will discuss it more on future episodes to come. But for, for sure. now, wow, I am pumped. Hmm? I said for sure. Oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> Abs- for sure. To your for sure. <laughs> so, Eric, you're bringing back the top 10 list today. Yes. Yes, uh, people, listeners everywhere, MuggleCast, uh, veteran listeners, uh, may remember we had a fun segment. We're trying to do more of these on MuggleCast since MuggleCast is back, and we're going to be more regular soon and all that other stuff. Uh, we're bringing back old fun segments, and the one we're going to do this week, and I think this one's a keeper based on our initial results, is Top 10. But I guess we already dun, just said dun, that. Dun, so. dun, dun. <laughs> we need uh we need a theme song or something, you know? We had m- 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 make the music connection. We mm-hmm. need some fun way of introing it. Uh <laughs> to 10 list. To <laughs> <laughs> the top 10. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> just um, use that same thing for every segment. <laughs> no, 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 no news. 
So what we did for the top 10 is we, uh, we prompted uh, our patrons over on Patreon um, for, to give us their answers for what they think um, in response to the prompt. And then what we did is we picked our favorites and ordered them into a top 10 list, just like uh, we used to do and also like, uh, you know, akin of late night television programs where they would also do this. So we're going to take turns reading it, guys. It's in the uh, Skype document. Um, but today's top 10 prompt was, and this is uh, relevant to the season that it just became recently, spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because. And uh, here's our top 10 for that. So, number 10. Spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because no winter wardrobes to pack away. Cloaks are a year-round thing. That was sent in by Shannon Brown. <laughs> There's poor people sweating. <laughs> Eric knows what that's, what's that, what that's like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> number I just wore it the other day. Oh, my gosh. To what? Where do you wear your Hogwarts cloak to? It was the Loyola University readathon. Uh, to support the HP Alliance's Accio Books campaign. Oh, cool. Were but, you yeah, sweating was, in it? Was it a hot day? Yes. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no, it was not. It, it, it has not been over 50 degrees here. I and sweated in the car. That, 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 I, that I cloak keeps reason. the heat in. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> did um, you drive in them? I, d I did. Yeah. He's driven in them many a time. Have you, like, filled up your gas tank with your cloak <laughs> on? <laughs> Yeah, I actually went to a 7-Eleven to visit the ATM, and I had to walk pretty much across campus to get there. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Also, also, you know what? The stairs have gone down, and I think that is attributable to the greater presence of nerd culture in the world today. Because um, I remember yeah. doing it in 2005 in November in New York to the uh, Disney store, and the looks I got then to the looks I got on Loyola Campus Chicago in 2016 – Night and day, let me tell you. I want to do a but, top 10 list where we count down the weirdest <laughs> places Eric has worn his cloak. <laughs> I will start right. working on that. <laughs> but, uh, for, for the next time. But so spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because somebody give us number nine. Number nine from Sarah, because they have Gilderoy Lockhart's Guide to Household Pets. Pests. <laughs> I like that one a lot. So Gilderoy Lockhart's books available in the Wizarding World make spring cleaning easier. I buy it. I would buy that. And that was from Sarah Piper. Mm -hmm. uh, number eight, a summoning spell helps identify where your stuff is so that you can put it where it belongs. Accio Locket. Stuff. I oh. seriously, like all the time, say Accio in my head when I'm like on the couch <laughs> And I'm just like, you want oh, the remote why nerd? Yeah, why can't why can't my phone just fly to me right now? It's usually when I've lost something and I'm scrambling to find it. Yeah, at five a.m. That's like that's like the one spell I would legit love to have in mm -hmm. in the real world. So thanks to Brandy for that one. Mm -hmm. Gina, you should read number seven. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because all your junk can be shoved into a trunk with an undetectable extension charm and you never have to look at it again. Great for pack rats. From Shannon Spicer. Shannon, I totally agree. That's a good one, but that's dangerous. Do you really want to save all that stuff and have a way to do it? I just, nice. I need an extension charm on my closet. So mm -hmm. that would... Yeah. That would help. Yeah, you wouldn't need to pay so much for an apartment with extra storage with a lot <laughs> of this stuff. Yeah, agreed. Uh, okay, so down to number six, uh, and this is spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because levitating heavy furniture beats asking for help or tiring yourself out. That's from Shannon K. Uh, I agree. Actually, if I needed to get stuff that was under the couch and not need to lift the couch manually, that would save me some time. Number four. Or five. Number five. Spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because they can use a time turner to never let spring start. <laughs> That's from Gigi. Gross. That That's was a good like, one. That was really sinister. <laughs> it's just like, I, I guess it's just for them so that they can always avoid spring. It's like the ultimate procrastination. I would just stay in summer all the time. 
I think. Good point. Number Except by the four. end of it, there'd be like 15 of you. <laughs> yeah. It's enjoying the sun. Number four, cups of your favorite accompanying fresh mint never empty. Ooh. Never ending butter beer. So what are you saying, Maureen? <laughs> that people like to drink while they spring clean. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of refilling cups of water for a hard day's work. No, of beer. <laughs> yeah, of beer. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three, because Scourgeify, done. <laughs> <laughs> and that is from Irvin. That would be, yeah, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. There's a spell for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay now we're getting down to the top two of top 10 spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards because number two one word fiend fire <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so dangerous <laughs> yeah. That's from, it's by definition it's uncontrollable fire you're just gonna set your <laughs> a flame to get rid of it sometimes you got to do that especially these pack rats who are trying to put it all in one <laughs> giant suitcase or an extended... i've often felt like it would be easier to clean if all of the stuff i owned was just taken from me in a blaze oh my mm. gosh don't say that no, <laughs> knocking on all of the wood right to the now. person who lives with you that comes <laughs> I have from stuff here too <laughs> that comes from katie also i would never start fiend fire in any katie place and either. urban are like two opposite ends of the spectrum <laughs> I, agree, how they would I agree go about it <laughs> and then number one, the number one reason spring cleaning is so much easier for wizards is because Voldemort's already hidden your antique junk and turned it into horcruxes. Hey oh Hey oh That's from Laura Jameson. Thank you, Laura. And thank you everybody who sent those in. Yeah. Got um, around twenty, right? Yeah, a couple notes. Well twenty my short list was twenty. We actually oh, wow. got like thirty five, I think, submissions total, and some of them were duplicates, so I cool. picked uh, one from each person and then narrowed from there. But um, we even got an entry from a six-year-old uh, whose Aww. mom, whose mom is a patron. So, oh, that's Aww. cute. I was I believe... going to say we have a six-year-old patron. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, his card? credit card keeps getting approved, and I let's I get him a really niffler. Just... <laughs> let's oh. get him a niffler. The the six-year-old the uh, six-year-old whose name I did not write down his entry uh, was uh, the stuff cleans itself, um, which is true. Oh. All right, so a couple news stories here. Um, first of all, the Wizarding World uh, Hollywood finally opened up. It's been under yes. construction for years. I was lucky enough to attend the grand opening. It was really awesome. John Williams was there, as I alluded to earlier. <gasps> so he, jealous. yeah, he performed uh, several of his scores from the Harry Potter movies, and they did something really cool this time for this one. They, um. They had a, a firework and projection show all around Hogwarts Castle. I took a video of it. You can actually see it on the Hypable Facebook page. Um, just really amazing. And it was so good that my first thought after it was, why aren't they doing this every night? Not, of course, with John Williams. He can't be there every night. But <laughs> do the fireworks, do the light show. The light show, it was only about... I don't know, five-ish minutes, but um, it goes through each of the Hogwarts houses and then it combines them all into one. It was just like so cool. And actually, they had a press day the day after the grand opening. I wasn't there, but um, some a Universal fan site or something asked one of the creative directors of the park if they have any plans to do a nighttime show. And they said, maybe. So maybe down the road they will start doing it. I think at night that would be a great way to get people to come out. I would see that more than once because it was really awesome. And, uh, and you know, that's something that they should do to compete with Disney. You know, if they project it against the castle, you might be able to see it from your apartment. I know. Well, I still got to cut that tree down. But oh, yes. after that, after cut that. Cut it down, man. <laughs> replant, Andrew. Replant that tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then one other news story today, we've raved about the Sorcerer's Stone Illustrated Edition. It came out late last year. We all have it at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. You Don't you dare say no or you're banned from the show. Um, we definitely have it. <laughs> I got it for um, Christmas, so. Uh, well, open your pocketbooks up again because they have announced the Chamber of Secrets <laughs> Illustrated Edition. 
What it kind is, of an endorsement is that? <laughs> it is coming out. A truthful one. <laughs> it is coming out later this year. Again, illustrated by Jim K. It looks beautiful. It's got Harry, Ron, and the Weasley tw- twins in the Ford Anglia approaching the burrow on its cover. They released a couple of pages from inside of it. A great portrait of Hagrid. A new portrait of Hogwarts. Um a look at the mandrakes, a look at phoenixes. So we all love the the first one. Obviously, I I think it, it's safe to say that this one and the rest of them are going to be just as good because these illustrations are just beautiful. And uh, yeah, it'll come out later this year. I can't wait. It's going to be October 4th, right, is the date Amazon lists. Oh, okay. You know 115 curious? illustrations. Yo, is that more than the previous. That's book? more. They said they said around a hundred for the first one. Mm. I think there's just going to be more and more as the books get longer. I finally got a yeah. chance to to read uh, several chapters from it at the, the readathon. We were just reading along using the illustrated edition, and it just it really sucks you in. Hmm. Um, so it's really cool. You know, a curiosity from this cover though of the Chamber of Secrets, the Ford Anglia has a license plate, and like it's it letters and numbers. Movie. I wonder. Oh, I wonder if that's a movieism. I wonder if it's the same as the one in the movie. Now I'm going to look that up later. <laughs> Eric always points out the finer things. It's just it's <laughs> weird. It's weird that it has a license plate. It's just it's that's a, weird. It's a refurbished car. It was a functioning car at one point. I get it, but what's the significance of H O W seven eight two D? There's no what significance. Is that? Yeah, there's no what significance. Is there? Now I need. Eric, I'm, Eric, I'm looking up. You know what? This is like the first Fantastic Beast movie. This is, yeah, this is JKR's door all over again, Micah. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> I'm going to reserve hdw782d.com oh right God. now. Get out of here. I would, uh, go to fantasticbeastmovie.com. Punch those numbers into the keyboard. <laughs> see if anything happens. I'm telling you guys, it's 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 special. Okay, so time for a little feedback now, Micah. Do you want to read this first one? Sure. The uh, the first uh, listener feedback comes from Johan in Norway, who's been listening for about four or five months now, really enjoys the show, and is halfway through listening to all of our episodes. Thank you, first of all, for... I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? That's, I mean, am- that's amazing. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I find it very interesting to hear all you guys have to say about the series. You've given me completely new perspective on different aspects of the story. Thank you. So, Johan goes on to say, basically, he's in a little bit of a pickle, right? Pickle That's what pack. I'm taking away from this. Uh, yeah. Pack? So, his, his, <laughs> he's... Go ahead. Uh, so, he is going to see the Harry Potter play in London in the Easter holiday next year, in 2017. But... They already bought the book version of the play and everyone else, as everyone else, you know, will will receive it this summer. So he he or she is concerned about. I think it's a she, by the way. Okay, so she is concerned about, you know, should she still go see the play next year? And by the way, I I I kind of hope we turn into this support podcast as a vice podcast where everybody sends their unique situations about the cursed child, <laughs> and we decide if they should go see it or not. After all, <laughs> here's here's my thought on this, and they and they say um, on on one hand, I really want to read it, but it might feel like it might ruin the experience when I see the play. My my whole thing is, and you know, here's my opinion, Johan, if if this helps. Um, is that nothing will ever match seeing the official play with the official cast on the official stage uh, in an official production. Nothing. Not reading the book. Agreed. Not acting out the play with your friends after reading the book, which you can totally do, and I'm starting a podcast where that gets done. But, you know, I, I think that there there will be something totally unique for all people who are able to catch the live performance. And so I would I would argue that you 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 probably can and it will be safe to read the play uh for curiosity's sake i know i would hate myself having to hold out seven months or eight months to 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 not read a book that i owned and had pre-ordered too so i would say go for it i agree i do too i and, and i feel like we even raised this question before uh it was raised here 
right? Uh, on a yeah. previous episode, because yeah, we, we knew that something like this was going to happen. I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that going and seeing this play is going to be a unique experience, something that you're going to enjoy doing. If the book comes out, and it will before you go and see it, then it's really your decision, right? I, I just think that you know, better you read it and not just get randomly spoiled because uh, I think it's going to be near impossible for you to not encounter some sort of spoiler, whether it's on television or on the internet or social media. I would just say do whatever feels right for you yeah. because I, I just think it's going to be impossible to go almost an entire year without somehow finding out what happens in this story. Yeah. And I think you can always change your mind later. If you if you read it, you can think about it for a month and be like, eh, do I really want to see it? And and then based on how you liked the story, you can decide from there too. So. <laughs> if you hate the story, you can always sell your tickets. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> for go. For a million That's... dollars. <laughs> Yeah, they might be able to go for a good amount of money, actually. So So thanks, Joanne. Yeah, and good luck with that. Um, Sorry, I called you Johan or something like that. Yeah, you did. I thought that was weird. I was going to ask, but I thought maybe you knew something I didn't. Yeah, I know. And, you know, if if anybody else is in similar pickles, feel free to uh, email us. If there's any other unique situations, we can certainly try to help you. But don't, but, you know. Make sure it's a unique situation. <laughs> we don't want to read the this, same stories over again. This is chicken soup for the cursed child attendees. <laughs> so. and, and make sure it's related back to Potter. <laughs> right. So on last month's episode, we spoke about J.K. Rowling's Native Americans in the Wizarding World piece on Pottermore. And to be honest, we didn't do the best job that we could have speaking about it. Um, we could have prepared for it more i think we could have better represented the views of the native american community and we didn't do that so for that we apologize um we did get some feedback some people weren't happy like i said um you know for example tara said it's just fiction is same as just a mascot it propagates an outdated and distorted view of who we are as natives um, and then Laura said, I love you, but listening to three white guys try to talk about why indigenous people are upset with JKR was just cringeworthy. Indigenous people have been writing about this online since J.K. Rowling first revealed there would be a North American magic school. There's no reason you couldn't have gotten informed about the conversation before gracing us with your clueless opinions. I uh, Listen, I am completely aware that it was three white guys talking about <laughs> the Native American community. So, like I said, uh, we're sorry about that. Well, I think the key is, is, is not the fact that three white guys can't have an intelligent conversation conversation i think we've proven our ability to do that hundreds of times over the course of the life of this podcast but to your point earlier i think we could have been informed a little bit more done a little bit more research based on what laura said i also don't think that approaching the argument from their standpoint the way that they did you know labeling us specifically the way that they did is any way furthers their argument. Uh, if, if anything, in my mind, it lessens it. So um, I agree with what you said, Andrew. I think you know, we could have approached it better. We could have been more informed. I think their, their point is, though, that we could have a different voice on the show, say a, a Native American voice on the show. I think that's where Laura was going with that. You know, the, definitely a possibility. And, and certainly it's not our place to tell anybody how they should feel about a specific issue, Mm -hmm. especially if it's coming from their perspective and and it's, you know, them that's being specifically referenced. Yeah. Uh, So a hundred percent on that point, I agree with what Laura's saying. I agree with what Tara's saying and what others wrote in saying. So, you know, sorry, I want to wrap up with one more email. This is from Simon. I thought he uh, put it very well. He said, long time listener, first time emailer. The last episode's discussion of North American magic touched on a number of complex or sticky aspects of American history. I wanted to comment on some of these as a person of color, focusing on the narrative around the Rappaport Law. Segregation between magical and non-magical folks could go very wrong very quickly. I'm imagining these films will, will involve desegregation and a more open life for wizards. 
Given the very specific American history of segregation in the 20th century and J.K. Rowling's very British self, I worry that this plotline will play out without any acknowledgement of the black American experience. Making matters worse is the very white cast of Fantastic Beasts. If you watch old black and white films, you'll notice that either never see black people or see them as laborers, servants, or entertainers. I worry that this film will do the same or exclude them entirely while depicting a triumphant desegregation where everyone can come together in understanding and unity while the Jim Crow South exists a few hundred miles away from the action. One of you mentioned excitement over the New Orleans wand maker, and it got me thinking that New Orleans' rich history of racial and cultural diversity could allow for some interesting people of color to add to the story and world. Who knows, maybe we'll meet a freedman or woman in the North. But as much as I love Joe in her writing, she is coming from the perspective of a white British woman, and that means she can very easily pass over these points or handle them poorly. I hope she is doing her due diligence or has people on her team who are. I'm not Native American, but I certainly saw a real lack of consideration or understanding in her use of their history and culture. I worry the, sa- I worry the same may happen for other marginalized groups, especially since none of them are represented in the cast that we have seen so far. So, uh, I agree what he said with what Simon said. I will add, though, that the president of Makuza is a person of color. So, you said it right. Have you been working on that for a month? <laughs> I've been thinking about it since our last episode. <laughs> Keep thinking about koozie. So thanks I for think- that. Thanks for all that feedback. And if you know this topic comes up again because of Fantastic Beasts or for, for whatever reason, we will do better research and try to this have was, a more accurate discussion. This was a great email. It's a very valid concern. I think it's worth um, you know furthering the the issue here because it's it's something that. Uh, we'd like to see Joe jo change, um, essentially. Yeah, I, I think though that what surprises me in a lot of these responses, though, is is knowing J.K. Rowling and the way that she has written past series. She's somebody who doesn't lack for research and doesn't lack for knowledge. So, you know, again, like in this email, specifically labeling her. <clears throat> as being a British white female, uh, like it doesn't I, do credit I, to previous instances in the past where she has shown her ability to research. Um, you know that said, the the recent blunder I would call it with the Native American culture uh, being adapted poorly into the Wizarding World shows that there are blind spots, and I think people are just being very apprehensive about what that could mean for the future. And I think J.K. Rowling being the intelligent woman she is should be working immediately to correct uh, the, so that there's not, for instance, a, a bad habit forming here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's something. And, that I and we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, they so. are somewhat aware of the issue when they first posted that native American article on Pottermore, it depicted that native American or Native Americans, and that image has since been removed. So they are aware of the backlash. We'll see what happens from here, though, because everybody's right. They they have to tread carefully here. Uh, One last thing here on the show today. This is from Emily, who recently made a very generous donation to our Patreon. Patreon. She um, sent in this email after doing so, and I thought to thank her, we should read it. It's kind of like a little game. She says, I'm a licensed nurse and a great fan of the books since forever. Not so much the movies, but I cried tears of joy when I walked into Hogsmeade in Florida on my 30th birthday. Aww. I've always identified as a Gryffindor. I was sorted as such on the original Pottermore. Here's my very brief story. I'm now 33. My man friend is 64. He's a professional musician. We've been together 10 years. As the British say, mind the gap. (laughs) Clearly, I haven't. I figured, well, we're sharing a home. We have been for quite a while now. My house is his, right? So what would happen if my long-term man friend, my partner and love of my life, who I should point out has no knowledge of the Harry Potter books or movies and absolutely no interest in any of it, what if he took the quiz in my stead? What if he took the new Sorting Hat quiz on Pottermore representing me and my house? Because our homes are the same, right? I figured this is my house. I've been with him for 10 years. Let's see what house I've been living in. So she also did this because she also has only one email address and she couldn't retake the <laughs> couldn't retake the quiz. <laughs> so she wants us to guess which house 
her 64 year old man friend got mm-hmm. do you think he got gryffindor as well representing her mm. i don't f- know I, I feel like i need more information on him being together 10 years if he's taking the quiz as her he so he he's putting in answers that he thinks she would put in i would think that he would also get gryffindor but then again it's kind it's of a, a hat new quiz. Stall. That's all. Does that happen on the new Pottermore since the website's all jank now? I don't know. Um, I don't think it does. <laughs> Who wants a hat stall, really? The magic's gone. You're both. Uh, can I? Can we just say that um, after reviewing this very uh, carefully, after going through all the details, that uh, we have a, a big announcement to make. You're actually both being sent to Ilvermorny, right? <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So forget about Hogwarts. It's irrelevant now. It's not even the focus of the next movie. <laughs> uh, well, it did appear that, in the Micah. trailer. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so why don't you guys take a guess? Well, Mike, I guess they're going to Ilvermorny. How about <laughs> Erica and Gina? Uh, I'm gonna say uh I, I think her man's a Hufflepuff. I don't I don't know why. Something about his I'm trying loyal- to put everyone in your house. Yeah, uh, but remember I, he's playing as her. He's, I know, I, okay. but he, you know why he's playing as her? Because he's loyal. Right? Right? <laughs> huh? And loyalty uh-huh. ultimately I think Pottermore, JK Rowling can always tell. She's like Santa. Uh <laughs> that loyalty uh is gonna stick out. In any attempted quiz, so I'm gonna guess Hufflepuff. She's like, and yeah, Santa. I can put people in my house. I don't care. <laughs> I I will say that he is a Gryffindor because you you are where you want to be. I I told all of my friends before they took the test what you are before the test is where you're supposed to be. So I okay. I think he is a Gryffindor. Well. Emily, please let us know. She didn't even give me the answer. I've been on pins just... and needles. <laughs> so email me again and let me know which house you were sorted in on Pottermore by your man friends. And we'll reveal it next we're episode. I to know, Emily. Yeah. Before we wrap up the show, just a quick update about our Patreon. We are getting really close to starting to do two episodes a month again. It is so, so beautiful. It is so beautiful. We would love your support. Now's a great time to sign up. Our first round of signed album arts are about to go out soon. Erica, uh, Eric, <laughs> Erica, Scola. Now, Eric has been very carefully plotting out the first round of signed album art cards. They'll be going out soon, right, Eric? I am holding in my hand 400 stamps. Oh, uh, I thought you said... As- I- Thought you're gonna hold all 400 cards. That'd be a lot. <laughs> hold in one hand. Uh, yes. Uh, tomorrow, the fir- tomorrow, the first round of album art is being shipped. I'm so thrilled that that is happening to our uh, eligible patrons. So close to 300 pieces of art are going out, and uh, people will start to see them in their mailboxes by who knows as early as the beginning of next week. Yeah, probably. And uh, we'd love to see some pictures of those. Uh, hang it yeah, up. Maybe you'll tweet, hang them up tweet on the at us. or something. Yeah, yeah tweet at us. Uh, tweet you know, showcase it. We'll retweet anything, you know, that we see. And, you know, Andrew, you were saying about, you know, how close we are to hitting our first milestone. And we have over 400 patrons and that happened. And, and keep in mind that, you know, the tiers that we have set up for album art and T-shirt is included in that same tier. It's it's capped. It's limited at 687 signups. So we have a little over 200 to go right. before you won't be able to get album art or a t-shirt. And uh, when you do sign up on Patreon, if, if you're impatient and don't want to wait for the card or the t-shirt, good news, there's lots of extra bonus material on the MuggleCast Patreon right now, including Muggle, bonus MuggleCast segments, chapter readings, and a whole lot more. Definitely. And- we are about to record two more bonus MuggleCast segments. So uh, we'd appreciate your support. It's helping the show grow. We have a, we have, yeah. a, we have a busy year, busy years ahead, and uh, we need your support to uh, keep this show ticking. And like I said, we're, we're getting close to two episodes a month again, which we haven't done in years. So right. that'll, that'll, be that'll be for everybody, which is great. You know, yeah. that'll come exactly. out on the MuggleCast podcast feed, just as this episode did. Yeah. Um, to celebrate our 
success and your patronage yeah so and i mean obviously there's so much to talk about we're at 90 minutes right now with this episode so oh yeah if we're doing when we're doing two episodes a month they'll be be around an hour each probably more in some cases so yeah so so thank you everybody who signed up so far thank you to future supporters and thank you to everybody for listening i'm andrew i'm eric i'm micah and i'm gina Thanks again, Gina, for coming on and for dealing with all the Patreon stuff (laughs) around your apartment. (laughs) We'll see everybody next time for episode 291. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.